As well, I would like to start by expressing my uh, appreciation for the privilege awarded to me to testify here today. It, it really is an honour to be asked to do so. I'm not here to talk about January 6th or about any particular threat, insurrection or protest, political or ideological, real or imaginary. I'm here to talk about the already extant and expanding collusion of government and corporation in restricting the individual freedom and autonomy upon which the productive, generous and stable psyche, psyche economy and state are themselves necessarily founded. I'll begin my comments, therefore, in the most general terms to shed light on the mounting problem. There are now 700 million CCTVs in China under the rule of the Communist Party. The system to which those electronic eyes are attached is the most complete state apparatus of surveillance yet imagined, with the ability not only to recognize faces at a distance, but gate itself when facial features are hidden or obscured. Such capability can and will soon be augmented to the point where the movement of eyes themselves, monitored by high resolution and intelligent cameras, will soon be sufficient to identify any aware and active party. The demented, naive and prideful engineers who so enthusiastically helped build this system call it Skynet. After the rogue and all-seeing technology that took such a dreadfully wrong term, turn in the famous science fiction movie Terminator series, featuring artificially intelligent robot intelligences hell-bent on protecting themselves by destroying humanity. The name also references a well-known Chinese phrase describing the reach of the divine itself. The net of heaven is vast, yet it misses nothing, which aptly describes the capabilities of the new state apparatus. The system is integrated with her, indicating their compliance with the dictates of the Chinese Communist Party, allowing for full control over access to everything they possess electronically, most ominously their savings and their access to travel, certainly all modern means of travel, but increasingly as the electronic gates come up even by walking. If you're Chinese or a visitor, your access to the world can be reduced to zero if your social credit score falls beyond an arbitrary minimum. This allows you purposefully to be shut out of all activities that can be virtualized. And in a rapidly virtualizing world, this increasingly means all activities, driving, shopping, working, eating, finding shelter, even fraternizing with friends and family. As merely being in the presence of someone with a low social credit score means that your own score can be lowered. This has also opened up the opportunity for the government to extract slave-like labor from its citizens so burdened as the donation of free work to the state still constitute one means by which erring Chinese men and women can increase their score and remain part of human society. This is precisely the payment system most desired by the most tyrannical, not the work for me and benefit thereby that constitutes the contractual arrangement undertaken by free and sovereign citizens, but the work for me and I will lift the deprivation I imposed that has always been the late motif of the slaver. Why is any of this relevant to people in the West? Well, because the technology that the Chinese Communist Party employs is an extension of Western technology because we already fell prey to the terrible temptation of lockdown employed by that state in the face of hypothetical crisis once and in the very recent past, because we're walking step by step in the same direction, partly because of the hypothetical convenience of universal and automatic recognition of identity, and partly because any problem whatsoever that now confronts us can easily be used to justify the increasing reach of the security and nanny state. It is said that Stone Age people first confronted with cameras and their resultant photographs by modern anthropologists objected to having their images captured as they feared the captivity of their souls. It turns out that such fear was prescient 
The images that we leave behind while navigating virtual space are such close duplicates of our actual selves that the capture of our essence is at this point all but guaranteed. We all now have our doppelgangers. We all live so much in the virtual world in consequence of our purchasing habits and modes of electronically mediated communication that our very selves have become reducible to a frightening degree to data, the modern equivalent of our footprint, with the same data making up an image of our identity, an identity which can be and is increasingly bought and sold by the invisible corporate brokers that still mostly use it to sell us what we so desperately and carelessly and conveniently want, but can also be used to track, monitor, and punish everything we do and say. Behavioral scientists facilitate this process with their reprehensible nudging, the practice of pushing people in a given ideologically determined direction by manipulating invisible incentives behind the scene. Corporations track purchasing decisions, developing algorithms that with increasing accuracy track our patterns of attention and action, allowing for the prediction of what might next be most enticing, doing so not only to offer us what we want, but to determine and shape what we need. Governments can and are colluding with these corporate agents to develop a picture not only of our actions but of our thoughts and words so that deviation from the desired end can be mapped, rewarded and punished. The development of a digital identity and currency is nothing more than the likely end consequence of such inclinations and the combination of both can and will facilitate the development of a surveillance state the scope of which optimistic pessimists of totalitarianism such as George Orwell could scarcely imagine. The new AI systems which are so rapidly emerging do nothing but increase this danger, providing for the possibility of a super surveillance whose scope exceeds anything that mere unaugmented humans could imagine, while also making it certain that even the perceptions that in the real world shape our attitudes, conduct and personality can, manip can be manipulated to the degree that we will not even be able to see a reality outside which that has been constructed by the superstate. The ultimate fascist collusion between gigantic self-interested corporations and paranoid security obsessed anti-human governments. We're already selling our souls to the superstate for the purposes of immediate gratification while being enticed to do so by Mr. fear Mr. Chairman, could ideologues. the witness be asked to summarize please? And do, I, do I have my five minutes, or do I not? Yeah. You've gone over five. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I can. I can certainly. If the, I can if certainly the witness could summarize, I, I'm, we're, we're always a little lenient with the I'll, time. If you I'll, could summarize, I'll take in a few ten seconds. more seconds. Sure. With increasing ability to monitor not only the actual attention patterns and behaviors of its citizens, but to predict those that are most likely, the persecution of even potential crime becomes ever more likely. If you have nothing to hide, you will have nothing to fear will be the slogan commandeered by those most likely to turn to surveillance to protect and control. What was the famous Soviet totalitarian joke attributed to Lavrenti Beria, head of the secret police? Show me the man and I'll show you the crime. Those words were true enough in the time of Stalin's KGB and the police were secret enough then as well. But that's nothing compared to what we can and likely will produce now. A police so secret that we will not even be able to detect their comprehensive and subtle activity. Monitoring crime so pervasive that everyone under the dictates of the system will have something to hide or order, much Mr. to fear. Chairman. Yep, uh, the gentleman's uh, uh, time is uh, expired. We now go to Mr. Knight for your uh, your statement. 